Hey everybody, I want to top off this lecture now with a maybe kind of like a side note on advanced shading. So this is a short section, um, but just I want to give you a taste of how far this can go and how much cool stuff we can do with this. How's my size? Um, advanced shading. All right. So first, it all comes down to well, I shouldn't say all of it, and I'll give counterexamples. But a lot of the times, we're trying to simulate the real world. So we simulate properties of um, light and materials to get more realistic results. And this gets really cool very quickly um, with math and with modeling how properties and things, um, material, the properties of materials and properties of light work, we can actually get some pretty exciting, um, exciting results. So first, I want to talk about materials. When you hear about shading, sometimes people will talk about the material. And unlike everything so far where it's like cut and dry in terms of this is that and this is that, when we get into lighting, things open up a lot. So materials just means properties of a surface. What does that even mean? What kind of properties? Well, when it comes to lighting, it kind of could mean anything. Typically, it includes the color, like an RGB model. You can have like a texture, like a picture that's supposed to show like a brick or it's kind of pattern. It can explain the bumpiness of the surface like the physical texture, because that changes how light looks and how reflections happen. You can even have reflectiveness. It can look metallic versus plastic, because they look different, um, and so on and so forth. Like there's no end to the properties. So I can't give you like, the four properties of materials and you know it. No, it depends on, on your model and depends what you're shading, okay? So there's materials. We also have lights. And we'll, we'll get an example of that. But a light is just a light source. That's all that it is. It's a source that emits. Now, when we put a light in a scene, we don't usually draw the light. Okay, in graphics, you don't usually see the light unless you have a light bulb or something. But you don't usually see the light itself. It's a, it's just there virtually, and it impacts your calculations. It impacts the shading that you do once you know that light is there. Lights have properties too. There's a size, for example. It's usually just a point source, though, which makes things simpler. A point light, point source is just a point, and you can calculate vectors to it and distance and those kinds of things. Light can also have color. Okay, just like the material can have color. Lights can be directional. They can be directional or, or omnidirectional. Or, 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 right? Um, you can imagine all kinds of properties of light, too. We also have the viewer. We'll talk about that. This, we've already thought about it a little bit. Sometimes it's called the eye. All that the viewer is, is you. This points to the person or the camera. So the, the, the light ma where the light is matters because things reflect differently based on angle and distance. Where the person matters too because you'll notice that as you move reflections change. There's certain reflections that retro reflect to you and if you move. So it's not just the position of the light and the position of the object that matters. For some lighting or algorithms, the position of the person. If you don't believe me, like do this weird thing that I'm doing. Look around your room and look at how the lighting changes. The objects aren't moving, the lights aren't moving, but a lot of the reflections and the and the shading will change based on based on um, your angle. Okay, I'll stop being I'll stop being weird now. Now I'm gonna jump the slides, but I forgot a couple that I wanted to put in, so I'll pause it and I'll be right back. All right, so let's go check out a lot of slides. Slide um, six to 21. Yep, that's a lot. Now I want to make a point. The purpose of showing you these slides is to get you an idea of what's possible. 
but the exact, um, I want to highlight that the exact techniques and details are not testable, okay? Are not testable. Okay, so let's head over to the slides. So here's an example um, of shading. This is uh, Fong shading. And what I want to highlight here is you can see how the color changes as it falls off from where I'm looking and the light source is probably up here um, and you can see the edges. This, this object has the exact same color in all the triangles but because of the lighting model and the shading model it looks a little different. This one looks blunk, chalk, chalky and, uh, and blocky and this one looks smooth and there's a lot of techniques we can do. This one doesn't actually have more triangles. I just used, uh, by the way, these pictures are all from my own prior work, uh, my homework assignments and stuff. Um, I just use a special technique here to smooth this out. Maybe you can come talk to me if you're curious about that in my office hours. Um, that's not the right screen. All right. Yeah, same thing. Again, you can see it's blocky here. I'm um, smooth here. But you can see it's really cool. You get this, 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 what, this is called a specular effect right here. Um, oops, yeah. This is a specular. Okay. And then there's ambient background light. There's diffuse lighting, and this is called specular there. So this is Fong on the right, and this is a, a different, a whole different model on the left called Cook Torrance. Um, and Cook Torrance model tries to look metallic, and you'll really notice this sharpness on the edges and this quick fall off the darkness. Quick fall. It looks pretty nice. Um, this is Cook Torrance shading on the on the kettle. Same thing again, and you'll notice here too. It like it doesn't brighten to one like a lot of things will. A lot of lighting models will brighten all the way up to one, but here we stay yellow and it falls off very quickly. It looks quite nice. So this is a different mathematical model. They both look similar in that they have shading, and the right one looked pretty cool until we put it beside the Cook Torrance, and you go, oh, that one does look a lot more realistic. It's kind of cool. So you use a different model to come up with um, the different values at the, at the pixels, and yeah, this looks great. Here's more Cook Torrance examples. This one looks kind of ceramic. Um, and you have that nice diffuse look to it, like ceramic would have. And this is more like polished black metal or something, I don't know, or stone. looks really cool. You can still see the artifacts from the triangles if you look really closely. I don't know if they came through in the video. These, um, I'll post these slides so you can see when you're looking closely. You can still see the triangle artifacts, which we you know don't want. On this one, we can't see that except the aliasing around the edges here um, and here. So you'd want to fix that. Yeah, this is a this is a technique called uh, gooch shading, and gooch shading is very popular. Um, it's it's un call, falls under a class of shade shaders called non photorealistic rendering. So here's Fong on the Fong on the right, and this is non photorealistic rendering. The job here is not, the job is not to look realistic. The job is to highlight the silhouette, okay, the silhouette. And just in case you're paying attention, the silhouette is when my look direction dot product, the surface normal is a watt. Hmm, think about that. So Cook Torrance, and here's an example of the bunny in Cook Torrance. You see, have, these are speculars, these are called speculars, these, these, these shiny bits, they still have specular lighting, but the color model, again, highlights, this PowerPoint, highlights the, um, the color model highlights the silhouette, so you can see the edges really well, and not it's not meant to be photorealistic. So here's another example of shading, and at first glance, you might think it's more of the same, but it's not. This is an example of what's called radiosity, and here's uh, what radiosity is. Radiosity is when the color of one surface, color of one surface bleeds onto another. This happens in the real world. This light is bouncing off this green wall, which bounces onto this wall, and gives it a green tinge. And typically, you can see it in corners because light bounces around in corners. You know, red corner, green corner. Um, so this is called radiosity, and we model where in the room the light bleeds. Also notice in this example, we have a, what's called a soft shadow. Okay, soft shadow. It's not a hard line like a lot of shadows are. And that's because our light isn't a point source anymore. It's a big light. And when you have a big light, you get some light blocked, other light comes through, and you, so you get a, what's called a soft shadow, and that's what this effect is here. And you see a bit of a soft shadow here too. Here's a more clear example of the soft shadow. This is a bit of an old picture. I would have done this oh, 15 years ago. So technology was a bit worse back then. So you can still, there's lots of triangles. You can still see them. But um, uh, yeah, right here you can see the soft shadows. This light is blocked by this 
black body surface and you can get the soft shadows it's kind of nice just to show you how i did this this is um a brute force technique where whoa right what you do is you cast rays from every surface to every other surface and find out am i blocked oh yeah does it have a color yeah how far is it the closer it is the more bleeding i get while i'm at it look i can cast rays to the light i wouldn't call this a ray tracer um, if you've heard of ray tracing, but this is definitely a ray casting technique because I'm shooting rays into my scene virtually to find out if I'm blocked, how close I am to other colors, and then you do it from every other scene. Here's the example of um, rays from this triangle here, and they go everywhere, and they go, okay, what colors can I pick up? And you can imagine the closer ones um, pick up more color and the further more um, have less color. Cool. So the last example set I want to go through is here. This is results from a, this is actually a ray tracer, and we don't really talk about ray tracers um, in this class. But ray tracers work a little differently. Instead of building your geometry and transforming, and collapsing it, and putting it on the raster, we work backwards. We start from me. We put a raster in front of me, and we do the math. I shoot a ray through my raster into the world. What does it hit? Okay. Does it reflect? Does it bounce? So this is the results from a ray tracer. Um, what's really a uh, telltale from a real tracer is these perfect shadows, these perfect complicated shadows. That's very telltale. This is a fong shaded. You can see that it falls off nicely. This is fong shaded too with less specular, more specular, more specular, right? Um, so this is all nice and shaded. All these colors, the, the surfaces themselves have one color, but our lighting model gives them these nice gradients, these nice shades. Here you can clearly see the two speculars. That tells me we have two light sources in the scene. Okay. So there's two light sources here, one, and, and that's why you get these complicated shadows. Here I added a red light. The red barely touched the green, but the white really picked up on the red. The blue turned a little purple. Um, yeah, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. This is one of the ultimate ray tracing shows, uh, show-offs. This big sphere here um, is see-through with no index of refraction, so I can see if you look closely, the blue and the red way behind without any bending. This sphere here has a refraction. It, when the light goes through, it bends. And, and these perfect, perfect reflections, that's a telltale ray, ray tracer sign. These perfect reflections. Look at this, bouncing back and forth. Um, so that's kind of cool. All right. So the last thing I want to mention, since I brought up these ray tracer examples, is earlier in the class, I talked about subpixels, and I talked about anti-aliasing. I sent you to my website, but I probably should have just showed you. Here's an example of no anti-aliasing, 2x2, two 3x3, two, um, three three, and 4x4. Four four. Now, what, what I mean by that is, here, one pixel is one pixel, just like you'd think. Here, each pixel is broken down into four subpixels, and you do that and you average them. Um, this is 9, you know, 3x3, three three, right? And this is 16. I'm not going to draw that. And so the more, if, if you look at this on my website or in the slides, the closer, the more you get, the more you, you improve those hard edges. And I have some zoom-ins. Here's, you can see the aliasing on the no anti-aliasing example, just a one by one. Um, these hard lines, either I hit the surface or I don't. Um, just like you'd see in, in the rasterization, I'm either in or I'm out. You get this hard color or don't color effect all around here. Now here is my um, six, uh, four by four, where Look at the difference between this red here and how soft this looks. All that we're doing is taking a bunch of lines, averaging those pixels, and, and the color ends up becoming a nice gradient along there. It looks way sharper, looks way nicer um, than this ugly one over here. And you'll even get like sections like this, which look like old video games, where you get this bumpy, grainy bit, whereas in the anti-alias version, it just gets blurry. We still have a lack of detail. We don't have enough pixels, but instead of being chunky, it just gets um, blurry. All right, so that's all I really wanted to show about those. As a reminder, um, this stuff what we just talked about wasn't testable. That was more for interest. Some of the stuff might come up again, and of course then it is testable, but you don't need to know what a ray tracer is, Cook, Torrance, um, Radiosity. Don't worry about it. That was more uh, for interest. Okay, so we'll take a break, and I'm going to come back, and we're going to finish up uh, this section.